10 seconds. So welcome to the June 3rd select board meeting. We are once again in the band room uh, at the middle school because town meeting is continuing into yet another session. Um, so we have a number of things on our agenda tonight and we will get started. First up is a food truck license application for Sloppy Dog Express. So if you gentlemen would introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Richard Dart, I'll be the manager on the truck. Okay. Yeah, I'm Mohammed. I'm the owner. Very good. Okay. And so we have your application in our packets and you have the new rental regulation, uh, rental, the new food, <laughs> that's a different subject, <laughs> the new food truck regulations that the select board approved in April. Um, right, so, down by the park and stuff like that. Right. right. Um, so one thing in your application has, um, you've indicated a couple of locations that you want to be, right. um, and technically the locations that you indicated are sidewalk locations, and you are, so they're, Right, you're a truck, so you can't be on the sidewalk right, locations. Right. Um, so it's important to understand that the um, the the truck, the on street locations are listed, and you had checked off um, Kendrick Park, I think. Um, in fact, you can be at any of the three on street locations. That's fine, and you can move among those places. For some kinds of carts that are just on the sidewalk, we specifically approve their location, right. but they uh, you can't be in the same locations as the sidewalk. Do you understand right. what right. I'm saying? Right. We don't want to, we don't want to put any compromise in any of the businesses downtown, nor any other vendors that might be there. And this is what I explained to him too. I've been in the food service business. Matter of fact, I'm still in. I'm manager for IOP in, in Springfield. Okay. Okay, and I've been a, a manager for Denny's. But I've been in the food service since I was 14 years old. So uh, okay. I know, you know, and I'm, as you notice, I've got my food safety uh, through the registry. Okay, good. Uh, I carry it with my car with me all the time, but uh, I do have the master that I will be posting in the truck. Okay. Okay. Uh, the only thing I have a question to ask you all if I can't be on the truck, if I have to train somebody, there is a form they call a PIC person in charge that I can give to them, you know, I sign it that they've been trained, they don't have to have the certificate. Uh, most places allow that, even in your big restaurants. <coughs> Will the town allow it? We've never even dealt with that question, okay. so we have to assume the answer well, is yes. <laughs> yeah, because I know the health department will, and that's why I wanted that, you know, because of different regulations in different towns, you have to know these things. Okay, good to know. Thank you. Yep, we don't have a problem with that. As long as you comply with the health regulations, that's fine. So I just want to make sure that we're 100% clear on the location. So you can be on the west side of the town common, south of Spring Street. Right. You can be on the west side of Kendrick Park. Now, Kendrick Park is that big circle downtown. See, I live in Springfield. I don't know Amherst that well. Kendrick Park is in the northern end of the downtown. It's a triangle. Right. Yeah, it's kind right, of a triangle. Right, right down there. When you're, right, you're coming off the of nine and sitting right there, that's the town common. No, that's, that's the town, town common. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right next to the light. I think that's right there. We're, um, yeah. By Bertucci's. You'll have to look at a map. Look at a map and confirm. Yeah. So I want to go over to the location. I haven't even been over there yet. Okay, yeah. So just make sure that you're only in the three locations that we've indicated in the regulations, which are also on the application. So the point is, on the application, you've only chosen one of those locations, and then you chose a couple of illegitimate locations that are basically sidewalk locations. Right. You have to ignore those entirely. You're not approved to be in the sidewalk locations. Right. You are only approved to be in any of the three on-street locations. So look at, the, look at the regulations and look at a map, and you'll figure that out. Okay. Um, Okay, so other questions from us first is, uh, you're only taking up one parking space, is that correct? Or yes. is it a double one? Space. Just one, okay. And does your truck make any particular loud noises? Does it have a loud generator or anything like the that? The generator's not that loud. It's not loud, okay. The generator's not that loud. Okay. The diesel part is running real well. Okay. And you understand that um, none of the spaces are guaranteed. So right. if you show up and there's a bunch of cars parked there that day, you're you know, you're out of luck or whatever. Um, and also, uh, what was I say about that? Oh, the you have to be putting um, quarters in the parking meters. If you're parking a meter spot as opposed to a permit spot, um, at the oh, right now the, the permits 
uh, town permit spaces are available to all. The town permits only run September through May. So you could be in a town permit spot um, in these same locations, no other locations, right. um, without money. But if you're parked at a meter, you need to be feeding the meter all the time. Right. So, okay, I just want to make sure that's clear. Okay. Um, so those were the, those were my issues. Did select board members have questions, Diana? I don't side. have a question, but if you look at your license application, the first three, which say on the street, are the locations where you can be, and then the ones that are marked on sidewalk don't belong, uh, are not where you should be. Right. You see, they so have, just, do you just have cross the those out. You don't. Yeah. That, those, those so don't I just want to make you. sure that it's really clear based on the application what we're talking. Okay. So, so the top three are good, the bottom okay. bunch are good. the ones that work, we can. Yeah, just okay. cross out all the ones on the street, because that's not viable. On the sidewalk. So on the sidewalk, the excuse me, on the sidewalk, thank you. Sir. <laughs> All right, I think we're clear on locations. Anything else, questions or comments from you? Mr. Hayden, anything? Yeah, just very quickly, first of all, I'm going to count on you or to you know, follow the rules with the health department especially and, and the police department as well. Right. Um, the, um, we feel that there, there's some value in having the diversity of, of menu that the food trucks bring to downtown. Um, what's going to be your contribution? We're going to bring, try to bring a hot dog all over the country. That's basically what we're doing, all different types of hot dogs. I've got uh, several different ones, like the Coney Island dog, the Chicago dog, uh, the Southern dog, different varieties of hot dogs. You know, and I don't think any place here has that. Really you know. And then we're going to put some sliders on there, too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just in case. Every, you know, the sliders are common up here, so yeah. we're going to have that. And chips, but, you know. And then we're going to have sodas and water. Because I know a lot, you know, that's what I told them. I said, you got to put water on it. Because a lot of people would rather have water than sodas. Now, is the Coney Island dog the one that takes chili? Yes. You're going to have chili as well? Yes. Okay, check. And I have a hot plate to keep it hot. I know by, I know on the Franklin, the health department says 45 degrees cold. Uh -huh. 40 degrees or lower. Oh, yeah. Okay, so good. <laughs> I want my food cap. I have cold temperatures 40 or below. And it says 140 or above. That your date is over 41 to uh, 140. Man. I try to go above on the hot and below on the cold. That would be better safe. Uh, food labeling will be done to specs and everything else. I'm, I'm very versatile on that. <laughs> we have great faith in your ability to comply with the health regulations. <laughs> so we're most concerned about the um, about okay. the location and the uh, how well, it affects downtown I'm businesses. Definitely abide by that. Okay, so you need to understand that this is a brand new thing in Amherst, and so we are we are just getting used to having regulations, having food trucks at all, having regulations. We have scheduled a review of these regulations for October, so it's possible that we could revise them at that point. At which you would be notified ahead of time. You would be notified ahead of time that we were going to uh, review them, so you could make any comment, and then you would get a new set of regulations if we were to make any changes at that time. Um, so. Uh, so just make sure you have the regulations, make sure you abide by them, bring to our attention through the select board office any concerns that you have about or them. Maybe we could, you know, but we might even be able to make you some improvements. Absolutely. You know, because, so, you know, being in the restaurant business as many years as I have, and being around where there are a lot, I've been in areas where there are food carts, uh, food trucks and stuff like that, uh, I know the benefits of them and I know the drawbacks of them. And that's where, if you, if you can go with the benefits, the food truck's going to make money. If you got drawbacks on the food, the truck's not going to make money. Because what happens is your local businesses will team up against you. And you don't want that. No. You want them to work together. No. So, so understand the regulations as they're written because they are very specific, trying to address the concerns we raised. Um, among the concerns that are common are um, making sure that you don't use the town garbage so you need to be taking well, out all noise. of your garbage um, with you. Um, the noise issues are uh, concerns. Let me think. The location issues are key. It's very important if there are uh, special events going on on any of these places, because basically the three locations that we've allowed for 
um, the on-street trucks is our common and two parks. So they're all park areas. These areas are sometimes taken for other events, reserved for other events. Like a, uh, you, know, you have that big fair or whatever is downtown. Correct. Okay. So sometimes those events also reserve the parking spaces that would otherwise be available to food trucks. If those meters are bagged as no parking, even if there's nobody in them, you can't be there because that means they've been reserved for another event. Okay. So that's just an important thing to, okay. to know about. That's what, that was one of the things I was going to ask you. Yeah. About. Okay. Um, are there questions or comments from Select Board before I ask these folks for their own questions or comments? Okay. Are there questions or comments from you that you can think of at the moment? Yeah. Mr. Crow Grabbing, anything? Yeah. I'm from the Business Improvement District downtown, so the right. manage downtown. Um, I think what you know, the question that I had about your applications were very similar to the question that already asked. Um, one suggestion I have maybe for October is changing the way that the, the application form lists street and sidewalk locations because it looks like you're supposed to check the street locations. Oh, yeah. We can, we can change Absolutely. that prior to October. So we're, we're, we're already um, in The other question that. I had right. was um, I saw on the application form at the bottom it said probably like the required with this application, you know, State Hawker and Peddler, Town of Permit, et cetera. Um, and then I saw two of those five attached. I didn't see the other three, and I was wondering what um, are, there, are those? Okay. Where are they? Uh, okay. I'm sure you have them, but I just wanted to just okay. here. The, uh, the workers' compensation, we don't have to have. Okay. The health permit, we can't get until Thursday. They, uh, they told us Scott, we got an appointment at 11 o'clock Thursday. Okay. okay. Uh, but they said we had to go through this first. <laughs> right. Right. And, and he's got the other ones already. So. Okay, so the one in five, well, it's a license at the station. Uh, I don't know what that is. What is that? I don't know either. What is it? <laughs> what is it? Why is it tested? Is that the reason the license that is I don't know. So some of this is, is stuff okay. the office deals Absolutely. with, so they won't grant the license until you've fulfilled these requirements. So I don't know what that those parts are. Yeah, they're good questions. Okay. So um, so select board is clear on what they're asking, the hours that they're asking for. Um, if we receive significant complaints about first of all they would be directed to whatever department would deal with them um, it's conceivable complaints could rise to the level of us needing to call you in and say okay you know we're having issues with x y and z um, we don't anticipate that but it's conceivable but we would let you know that so you know you'd be right. present for us to have that well, discussion problem, you know, we, we want to be addressed because we, like i said i don't want problems and we want to be able to rectify as quick as possible so you even get one complaint you know like like the restaurant you got a complaint call you know that they call corporate. We try to rectify it. Good. That way it improves your business. You know, because I gotta tell people when they come into my restaurant, they uh, I say, You're my you know, this is my second home. This is the home that paid for my home that my wife lives in. <laughs> right? And when I invite you into my home where she lives, I said I treat you good. When I invite you into my restaurant, I wanna treat you good too. Well it's the same thing when I'm inviting you to you know, to our trust. I'm inviting him into my home. So I don't want to, yeah. That's great. That's great. So I appreciate the attitude. We appreciate your, your uh, understanding that this really is kind of something that Amherst is getting used to and so that we may need to well, tweak I it over the way. Can help it well. Appreciate that very much. Okay, anything else from Select Board? Ms. Stein, would you like to make a motion? Sure. I move that the Select Board approve the application of Mohammed El Habi Diawri doing business as Sloppy Dogs Express for an on street lunch cart license to operate Monday through Sunday, 11 a.m. to 2 a.m. on the west side of Kendrick Park slash west side of the town common south of Spring Street slash north and east sides of Sweetser Park. Could I ask for one change on that? Uh, one moment. Oh. Mr. Hayden, is there a second? A second. Uh, for the discussion, you have a question? I just wonder on the time, if we could put the time earlier in the day, like 7 a.m. That's the case, if we get going, not, we don't want to start that right now, but what it is, is normally you're going to need an hour to get set up once you get to a place, so that's 10 o'clock. But later on, we might want to be able to put a couple breakfast items out to people if it goes over well, and we'd like to know if it's you know, possible we could have it a little bit earlier. Or uh, should we apply for that later on, or do you want um, to? We at least need to, 10 o'clock to be able to set up for a lunch. 
10 o'clock, is that a problem? So I don't have a problem with that. Does Black would have a problem with that? No, no that, I would accept that as an amendment. So you want to change it to what time? I'd 10 like o'clock or earlier? 10 o'clock, well, 7 o'clock would be great. That would be the earliest we'd set up. Uh, that doesn't mean setting up the generators or anything else. It would be actually 8 o'clock we'd start serving. So that's when the generators would actually come So out. you'd only do that if you're opening for business at oh, 8 o'clock? Oh, we're going to start serving breakfast items. Okay. Otherwise, it'd be 10 o'clock I'd be setting up. Okay, so let's work that into the motion. So okay. um, 10 a.m. to 2 a.m. Um, how should we do this? And with the, with the allowance to open at 8 a.m. if they add a breakfast menu right. and are, are doing active business in breakfast, something like right. that. How about okay. that? Because our concern is right. you can't come in at 7 o'clock just to park in the parking no, space no, to no, make no, sure no, you no. got a prime no, lunch spot four business, hours later. It wouldn't be for, you know, just to be sitting there. It'd be because, for business. because so you know that's exactly the kind of thing that would draw a complaint. So it specifically says in the regulations you right. can't be you can't be occupying the space when you're right. not doing business. Right. So, okay. So are we all clear on that, Mr. Heaton? Yeah, yeah. we're clear. Uh, although I'd like to point out that it really changing the 11 to 8 would have you know rather than with the lunch menu and everything else. And if that's important. And I tend to agree with you that it is. It really is a different menu than we've heard about tonight right. being applied for. I'd like to leave it at 10 and, uh, okay. well, and, 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 see, and see you again when, it, when it's time to, and we'll have time to. Okay, if we're not having any problems, see, uh, uh, you know, ask for a hearing so we can go yeah. over the other. So do yeah. we actually care what their menu is? Well, we, we have no. Just, okay. No, what I, what I more care about is that we understand um, how we're regulating early morning um, setup and, and operation. There's something, um, uh, you know, having a generator, even a quiet one, starting at 7 o'clock in the morning, which is possible. You said no, but that's, you know, um, I think I would like to have more time to think about that and to consider it. Okay. Um, and I don't want to rush headlong into this as we're feeling our way through it. So I think that's perfectly reasonable. You so know, we have, I, I appreciate everything that you guys are offering right. I understand. and I need to catch up. Okay, so, so that makes sense. We have put a certain mm -hmm. thing out there as what people might be commenting on, and so yeah. breakfast would actually add a different dimension to yes. it. There could yeah. be people who would want to come and deal with that. So 10 o'clock, okay. I'm, so I'm 10 comfortable with that. We're good with that? Yep. Okay, so Fine. skip the whole breakfast thing. So the understanding right. is you'd that's come fine. back if you, if you wanted to amend and, that. And okay. Okay, Mr. Maybe I should let Ms. Brewer ask this question, but do we want to, um, do we want to somehow refer to our regulations in the motion? I think or that's, that I think that's, that, that is stipulated. Okay. They have to conform to the regulations. Yeah. I tried to listen, really I did. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Okay, further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 <laughs> you believe? <laughs> okay. Four in favor, one absent. <laughs> okay, good. You're all set. We appreciate Thank you very time. much. We look Thank forward you. to seeing your truck. Yeah. Great. All right. Next up, we have. Uh, all right. We've got untimed items. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Mooring has a couple of things for us. <laughs> Okay, you can move to the mm -hmm. middle seats just because you're closer to the match first. One of us, southern dog is. Okay, so we've got the Pelham thing, Pelham sewer line, uh, intermunicipal agreement, and then the discontinued portions of a couple of roads. So, no? Okay. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> okay, so tell us whatever you want to tell us, and then we'll ask a question so, about other uh, things. Pelham Road is, or Amherst Road is actually the issue I brought biggest issue right now. Um, we did the sewer line on Amherst Road in Pelham. We did it all the way up to from the town line all the way up to the water, water, treatment, water treatment plant. Um, what happened is, is Mass Highway and the town of Pelham are still negotiating and designing the road improvements that Pelham's getting ready to do. So the road conditions changed four or five times and what we were supposed to put back in the road after we dug the ditch and put the pipe in. We actually chose the easiest way because that was the last choice we had. We always liked the easiest way. Then Mass Highway and the designer came back and said, no, we want this. By the time they came back and said, no, we want this, we had already put the patch in and we were almost done. To go back and change it would require us closing the road down and doing a, a lot, a lot of inconvenience to the traveling public. 
So Mass Highway and Town of Pelham all came to the agreement that what needs to happen is we need to work this into the road reconstruction. So we have money left over because we didn't finish doing all our work for patching. We were going to come back and put another patch on top of the, a final <coughs> patch, we call it. We haven't done it. So the, what I'm asking you to do is give the town manager permission to enter into a municipal agreement, their municipal agreement, that will pay for the pack, final patch in the Pelham Road job. So it's $210,000 is what the final, final patch will work out to be. That's the estimate. And Mass Highway will do the patch as they're doing the rest of the road work. So it'll be much better than us closing the road, digging it all up, putting a patch in, Mass Highway coming in and tearing the road up and repaving it. Okay, so the folks in Pelham and at Mass Highway agreed to this. This is a good way to proceed yes. on their end. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm in total agreement with the approach. Um, and the, the cost of the town is roughly the same as if we had done it the original way. So it's partly a timing issue and who does the work. Um, the intermunicipal agreement allows the monies that would have been used for that purpose to be um, you know, made available to Pelham as they work directly with their contractor and mass uh, Department of Transportation to finish the job. And the road ends up getting done the way it needs to be done and we're all happy. Yes. Okay, questions or comments from Slexley? Mr. Hayden. Yeah, just, uh, um, is the final product going to be great, good, as good as if it had been done the other way? The sewer lines will be great. I'm not well, I'm thinking about that, but also the part that I see every day when I travel. Uh, the road will be much smoother. Uh, the project has gone through, the road project for Pelham has, has gone through many iterations. It has gone from a Cadillac version down to a Toyota, down to a Chevy, down to a back up again to almost a Cadillac and down a little bit more. So it keeps moving and Mass Highway hasn't actually, and the designer haven't actually finalized it yet. Will it be better than what it is? Yes. Will it be a good quality product? Yes. Okay. Yeah. But it's not gonna be, I think the Cadillac version is now out. But it's not the low, it's not the Yugo version either. Yugo. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. okay. <laughs> uh, all right, other questions or comments from Select Board? Mm -hmm. Ms. I'm sorry if I missed this. Did we, why does our um, motion not include anything about the cost? I uh, asked about that and I was told it was. So we've got a draft motion on the memo and we've got a, mem a motion on the motion sheet that are different. Mr. Wiesnanty. The motion on the motion sheet um, is um, what is recommended by town council because the action is not approving the intermunicipal agreement itself. It's giving me the authority enter into an agreement and we have a very firm estimate of 210,000 so the motion as drafted is adequate I think we can make sure that we build into the minutes the estimated price okay excellent How's that? Yeah. so okay. if it was if it passed some threshold you would come and tell us yes change of plans with Pelham yes okay <clears throat> uh, all right anything else from select board Ms. Stein. I move that the select board authorize the town manager to enter into a memorandum of understanding with the town of Pelham to complete the Amherst Road sewer trench patchwork. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All right, that's unanimous, one absent. So then we've got this thing about discontinued stuff. You don't know anything about this? This is a follow up to the town meeting vote of it's been days now yes, since right. we voted on these at town meeting. One of the many action steps is a uh, select board declaration of the discontinued road as roadway road portions as surplus. So this is the same fragments of discontinued roadway that town meeting has blessed and planning board and everybody else. Uh, and this is an action step you need to do. Okay, so we, we expressed our intent about this, planning board weighed in, blah, 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 town right. meeting weighed in, now exactly. we need to do this. Um, but town meeting hasn't wrapped up yet, does that matter? Wouldn't you uh, wait No, this or? vote can be taken before or after town meeting, so the timing is fine, because it'll, it'll, be, it'll be fine. Okay, Ms. Burke. So we're at step six, finally, of six? I believe so. <laughs> I like that. Well, step six of six. There's, there's seven steps, actually. <laughs> oh. 
<laughs> only list six. Plus three more pages. <laughs> no. Yeah. Which okay. Six. Questions or comments okay. from select board? Ms. Green. Okay. Um, I'm going to miss this a lot when they don't have that. <laughs> is this really, seven is really the last, even though it's off the edge of the paper now? I'm sorry. Sure it's, we see this over and over again. Once you do this, the last thing, thing to do is actually record everything at the administrative deal. Oh, I knew there was more. I knew there had to be more. But you, this is your last official. This is your last so I'm good. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> uh, further discussion? All in favor, say aye. Uh, we haven't. I was afraid. This time, you're, you're cutting my roll out. <laughs> <laughs> it all runs I, together. <laughs> I move that the select board declare that the parcels of land shown on a plan entitled, quote, plan of land in the town of Amherst, Hampshire County, Bay Road, West Bay Road, and West Street, altered and laid out by the town of Amherst, end quote, dated December 2011, on file with the town clerk, that are located outside the altered layouts of Bay Road, West Bay Road, and West Street, which are currently held by the select board for public way purposes, are no longer needed for such purposes. Second. Further discussion? No. All in favor, say aye. 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 Four and a zero, one absent. Thank you very much. Okay, let's do these couple of other things that we can get rid of quickly before we get into things that are vaguely more complicated. So the uh, common vitulers license. I move Thanks, that the select board approve the application for a common victuary license for Bon Appetit Management Company doing business as Bon Appetit at Hampshire College, 893 West Street, Amherst, MA, 01002, Monday through Sunday, 7 a.m. to 11 p.m., Kelly McDonald, manager. Second. For the discussion, Mr. Eden. Does this, rep I, I'm trying to remember whether we've, we've approved a common victualist license for a different firm yes. uh, a couple of years ago, and does this supersede that? Does, do we rescind that, or do we just let the two of them move along together as time goes on? Uh, they're changing their catering company over there. If it needs to be rescinded, I'm sure Deborah will bring that back to us. Okay. Um, <clears throat> but I don't mind they have two common fix licenses over there. It's just. Right. Seems like something that you might be, want to be tidied up. Yep. Ms. Brewer. Yeah, it was my understanding that this replaces Sodexo, their current manager. Right. And since it's not a liquor license, it's not that complicated. Right. <laughs> I understand. Right. We'll have to deal with all kinds of complications about their liquor license Eventually. coming up. But this yeah. is just yeah. the common bit. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor, say aye. 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 <laughs> Four to zero, one absent. Committee appointment this time. I move that the select board approve the appointment of Damon Mallory to the Human <coughs> Rights Commission for a term to expire June 30th, 2016. Yeah, it should be supposed to say 16. Yeah, could we please change that to 16 yeah. because we're so late in the year that we'd really like him to have the full term. And that was the original uh, email that was exchanged. Second. Further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Four to zero, one absent. Okay. So now we've got a couple of things to deal with. Let's deal with logistical issues related to town meeting first. Um, Mr. Wald is not here. So um, the question is who's going to speak to 43? Um, Mr. Hayden and I have both been discussing that one of us might do it. Do either of you want to be entered in the mix for speaking to 43? <laughs> you have a minority report. I, yeah, I have a minority <laughs> report, so it would be most inappropriate okay. if I spoke <laughs> on both sides okay. of the issue. So, Mr. Hayden, would you prefer to speak to it? Would you prefer me to speak to it? Take I prefer, I, I don't know. I'd like to. You'd like to put it speak that to way, it. yeah. Okay, so I'm happy to give it to you. So, Mr. Wald did supply some <clears throat> um, comments and information about yeah. it. So, uh, so we have that. I'll, I'll suck those into my comments. Okay. And um, likewise, Mr. Wald was doing um, some, if not all, of the zoning. Or maybe it's just some. I think Mr. Hayden already had some of the zoning. But um, so we're also sort of assuming that we want Mr. Hayden to take over Mr. Wald's portion of the zoning. Does anybody? That was my <laughs> Have a problem with that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hayden, it's all yours, unless you don't want any of it, in which case I'm happy to take any of it. So you don't, no, you don't I, need to feel obligated. I, I, yeah. I, yeah, you do. Don't feel it's obliged. Good. I, I will. Take it. Be honored instead. Oh, right. And those are the logistical issues. Anybody else have logistical issues related to town meeting that we need to deal with? Okay. Then let's get into the other untimed items, which are um, preview upcoming summer meeting plans. You have a memo in your packet 
it says 2013 summer meeting plans, and that is just to outline for you, give you a sense of what's coming up uh, over the summer. These are things that are either anticipated um, with some reasonable sense of likelihood, or that, that are part of our master calendar that kind of get carried over, and this is how we do them, when we do them. This incorporates um, the elements of the um, evaluation process that's part of a different document, and other things that we have talked about. Um, we are going to be very short-handed at the June 24th meeting. Both Ms. Stein and Mr. Wald are going to miss that meeting. So knowing that we had a bunch of things that we needed to do but some of which would really rather have the full complement of us there for. We I tried to, and with Ms. McNeil's help, try and put um, those really critical things in the July 29th meeting. Um, in particular, those are the update on the Rolling Green affordability situation. Um, that was something that we had talked about, Mr. Musanti, giving to us at a June meeting. Well, if town meetings weren't going on for so very many weeks, that might have been able to happen. But at this point, the only June meeting it could happen at is June 24th. And when we're down 40% uh, of our membership, that doesn't seem like the right time to do that. Um, also, the update on medical marijuana regulations. Mm -hmm. uh, at that point, we're expecting there might actually be recommendations for how the town should proceed, perhaps at fall town meeting with that. So that's something, again, that ideally we wouldn't want a full complement of us there for. Um, the Chapter 61 right of first refusal. This assumes that, that this situation would all be worked out by then. If it's not, then obviously, you know, if, it, if that isn't ready for us to deal with then, then we clearly wouldn't deal with it. Um, but just to just to sort of give it a place to potentially be dealt with that is there. Um, so so that I'm basically I'm just kind of summarizing the fact that I tried to put the really critical stuff at that July meeting. Um, the rest of it's pretty self explanatory. Does anybody have any questions about what that looks like? Miss Stein. There's no way we could move the June twenty fourth meeting to June seventeenth. There's not. Um, we're either still going to be meeting for town meeting, which is possible, heaven help us, or Mr. Musanti will be away then. And so it's, we're more able to do a meeting down a select board member than we are down a town manager. So, okay. Um, any other questions or comments? Mr. Hayden. Did you mean by July 29th, the week of July 29th? Because that's a very full schedule. I just, I just want to point out that, that <laughs> we can expect that to be a good night. Yeah, so I mean, we understand that this is sort of the trade off to meeting way less frequently Absolutely. in the summer. So, I mean, plan for a nice long meeting on <laughs> July 29th, but instead that means we don't have to show up yeah. other Mondays in July, right? Um, Ms. Stein. I'd be very interested in the updates on the after school program and on the new taxi regulations. So, I'm, well, you'll have the wonderful post meeting list. We'll hope it'll be fleshed out or Perhaps Mr. Musanti will have a couple of written documents that I can read. Right. Almost certainly yeah. there will be documents for those. Yes. If you have questions about it ahead of time, you could send them in. And obviously we can do any follow-up that you would like right. to do at the July 29th meeting. Right. I think I'm just interested in hearing yep. about those things. Yep. And the meeting will be broadcast, so you could watch it later as you recover <laughs> okay that yeah, seems, that seems terrible <laughs> what a lousy what way to recover recovery. watch select board meeting okay miss burr i'm sorry did you say that neither wald nor stein would be here on the june 24th correct okay that's what i thought you said but yeah i i would second the idea of there being written documents then yeah. because then that just gives them more ability to interact because i know that one of the last things i ever want to do when i'm sick and miss the select board meeting is ever watch it when I'm well, and I don't think there are enough painkillers in the world to make <laughs> All right, so that's just sort of an outline, so you have an idea what to expect. Obviously, it's subject to change. Things will be added, subtracted as necessary, but uh, if you have any questions about that, then uh, let me know. Um, so then the next one is the our evaluation calendar. Um, that is essentially exactly the same as it was last year, updated with this year's dates. Um, it, <coughs> with it, this year's dates and times and, and everything relevant. Um, it requires me to get you the documents by next Monday's meeting for, uh, for our consideration and approval. Um, and 
or, or, or for our review, we can have more comment and discussion about them on the 24th. I very much hope that I will have those for you on the 10th. I have met with um, Ms. Radway as we had talked about last year, following last year's um, evaluation process to talk about how to improve the staff questionnaire and she had lots of great comments. I'll go over all of that with you in detail mm -hmm. when I present that stuff to you next week, but I think, uh, I, think I think you'll be pleased with that. Um, so basically, that, again, this is just sort of an outline of what, uh, what the evaluation timeline looks like for this year. The critical date I will bring to our attention is Wednesday, August 14th. That will be the date by which I need your evaluation forms. Um, because on Thursday the 15th, I will spend all day and half of Friday the 16th working on compiling those into our actual evaluation. So it's really, really critical that I have those from you by the 14th. So if you're, make, if you're potentially traveling or doing other things, uh, make sure you kind of work that into your plans to, to get it to me earlier than that if you're going to be away or whatever. Um, and again, that's, this is unchanged from last year, just updated. Questions or comments about that, Ms. Brewer? Uh, again, and obviously the Stein committee this first off, but to, to remind ourselves that at the Monday the 24th meeting that you and Jim will both be missing, that's when we're going to approve the form itself. And so if Ms. O'Keefe is actually able to get it to us on the 10th, then that puts a little pressure on you to say, oh, but remember, I really wanted to change this one thing. Right, so you've got two <laughs> weeks to so, offer comments, sure. so, so, uh, yeah. so please do. But that would be the time to do it because yeah. we would assume that when we walk out on Monday the 24th, when we're finished with that meeting, that aside from some tweaking based on <coughs> what we talk about at that meeting, that then we'll be able to start working with the form. Yep, exactly right. Okay, anything else on that? Okay, then, let's see. Anything else we need to talk about here? We did all those. All right, so then that brings us to key information updates from the town manager, if there are any. Uh, yeah, just real quick. <coughs> um, article 42, next steps, the Echo Village Apartments article that was referred to Housing and Sheltering Committee. We are proceeding ahead as we talk about prior to consideration of that article. Uh, and also directly with the Housing and Sheltering Committee. Uh, next steps, working with staff, working with uh, the tenants group, uh, housing authority, um, mass housing partnership. Um, looking at next steps, uh, we've had some fruitful discussions, for example, with mass housing partnerships about proceeding with a uh, kind of a financial feasibility assessment, appraisal, and what are the short-term, longer-term potential uh, uh, capital or other needs in the property. So those are kind of the logical next steps of having good information in hand on which to have uh, discussion with, with uh, the owner and with uh, potential partners down the road as we try to preserve affordable units. Okay. Um, somebody told me today that you might be speaking about those next steps tonight. Um, um, I've, I've been told that there, there might be a motion made by a town meeting member to reconsider Article 42 tonight, and so I thought, um, you know, if that unfolded that way, that I would make clear to town meeting what, what I intend to do as town manager with your blessing as next steps to try to preserve as many of those units as affordable as we can. Okay. So I, I was, only if Article 42 comes up tonight, I was prepared to say something. Okay, the person I talked to said that they thought that rather than reconsider Article 42, that you were going to speak to it, but that might just be a misunderstanding, so. I think okay. that is a misunderstanding. Very well. Um, <laughs> okay, uh, questions, comments from Mr. Santi, Ms. Brewer? Um, and so perfectly timed is that the Housing Sheltering Committee met on Friday and they intend to send a memo to the select board asking, these are the things we'd like the town manager to report out on regularly so people hear it on TV, so people see that it's continually being done. And it's just what he said, only with some more details. Sure. And so um, that's, that I told them that made sense as their next step sure. in terms of interacting with us to officially talk to us about it that way. And so they were drafting that on Friday. Okay. Any other key information updates from you? Um, I'll just note, I should have noted under logistical issues related to town meeting, um, I did ha have a conversation with a town meeting member today who was saying that they understand that there is going to be a move to dismiss the zoning articles 
and they wanted to know if they could come to us and talk about that and ask us to dismiss them. And I said, well, you don't need us to dismiss them. You can, any town meeting member can do that. I uh, said that we don't have a public comment period during this time, so we had a bunch of things on our agenda. They were welcome to come and speak to us about this if they wanted to do it. It was unlikely that we would take a position to support a, a last minute dismissal motion for something that we had unanimously approved, um, but it was their option to come and sit and see if they want to talk to us about it. So obviously they opted not to do that, but I just wanted to let you know I had communicated that. Um, so I'm sort of taking the pulse of the select board as I would imagine it, but also not promising anything uh, on our behalf. So that may or may not happen, who knows. Ms. Brewer. So the, what you shared with them, as you just said, is that we would not be taking a position on dismissal at this point. That's not something, although it didn't seem like we needed to. If we want to, we could, but we, I don't want us to because, like you said, we supported the items, and I know that one of the arguments that's been brought forward, and I'm sure the town manager is prepared to speak to it, is this idea that, you know, on video we were reported as saying studies will be done before any other zoning is done, but, you know, <clears throat> what's the meaning of small zoning changes versus large zoning changes, et cetera, and whether or not how relevant that particular statement was at that moment in time. So that will probably be part of the argument, but obviously the town manager is prepared to speak to that, so I'm not concerned. I don't know if you want to speak to that at all. If you get asked, um, and you uh, feel I'm like you want to. I'm fully in support of the planning board recommended articles, and uh, the uh, town is spending an appropriate large and focused amount of time on housing issues and has in earnest over the past several months with you know regulatory issues and studies of various kinds the housing production plan is out there in uh, great detail uh, out on the town website we've got some preliminary findings from the housing market analysis um, but i think the zoning proposals that have come forward are not contrary, you know, there's a difference between uh, doing absolutely nothing and taking small forward steps while we all digest and decide on what, what makes sense to do on housing production plan issues. Echo the Hill, Echo Village Apartments being one smaller example of that. So I don't see it as a reason to delay. Mm -hmm. Ms. Stein, did you have a question? Um, I must have missed it, and I've been away, but where are the preliminary, preliminary marketing information? Where is that available? Is that posted on the, uh, I don't remember, is that posted on the town meeting? The first stage is posted on the planning department okay. website. I will check on that in a few minutes in the next one, but I will and, and as you said, it's on the town meeting page in terms of the reports right. that have been made to town meeting, people can also find it there. It's definitely there. It's, uh, it's uh, May 13th. The housing right market one? Yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. HPC, the housing production plan has been online. Right, right but yeah. it's, it's the so cover memo there. you okay. wrote on May 13th yeah. with the accompanying right. stuff from the market study. Yep. So okay. it's on the back table, too. Okay. Other questions or comments about town meeting issues? Anything from Mr. Musanti, Ms. Burke? i got to put in a plug for the market study discussion. Um, there is going yeah. to be a meeting on the 18th, yeah. Tuesday. Not a town meeting night, just in case. Tuesday, for the yeah. 18th from 7 to 9. So that word's starting to get passed on that. Yeah. That was just confirmed today. Yeah. Okay. And what is that meeting? That's about, that's meeting with the, that's the consultant presenting some findings to the planning board and housing and sheltering committee. Combined meeting. All right. Anything else we need to discuss now? So we're clear that we are meeting again next Monday at 6 o'clock because that's when we're going to go over the, uh, the uh, your introduction to the uh, evaluation forms and whatever else happens between now and then. Um, so we are meeting then. Town meeting is not meeting Wednesday of this week or Wednesday of next week because we do not have the auditorium on those dates. So should town meeting continue, I would think that, that in a rational world we should be able to end town meeting on Monday the 10th but there is some possibility we could go keep moving in and that would require the meeting on the 17th heaven help us if we're still uh, doing town meeting after that uh, Wednesday the 19th would be another date also those are all at the bottom of your uh, agenda Ms. Brewer 
as, as a completely random thing, and I know we want to get out to the floor soon, is associated with Chapter 90 funding, because the last thing we've gotten from the MMA said, yeah, you know, that's not looking so great, <clears throat> um, was I know that Kulik has sent out an email to town officials, which somebody copied me on, and just wondered if was Amherst writing a letter. And I said, well, obviously our town manager talks with these folks all the time, but I know sometimes we write letters. I'm not looking at Ms. O'Keefe to write this one. But about set, you know, making sure our priorities are clear, even though, of course, we know that Rosenberg and Story know these things, even writing to the various people on these committees, like Stephen Brewer, et cetera. So do you, I mean, do you, have you been getting the word that it would be nice to have the select board write a letter like that, or are you fine with the way things are? What do you want? Been communicating with the governor's staff via email, reminding them that House and Senate are fully on board on Chapter 90 at the level of $300 million and believe the tax bill working its way through the House Senate Conference Committee has adequate revenues in it to support road money at that level. And that urging the governor to you know, work, work with the legislature to finish that effort. So is that so the answer is we don't need to write I don't a letter? Think there, I don't think okay. there's a need for a letter. Works for me. <laughs> okay. I'm happy. Anything else? Then, Mr. Hayden. I would like to move to adjourn. And without objection, this meeting is adjourned <laughs> at 6.46 p.m. Thank you very much. See you next Monday. <laughs>